Republican Senator Shelley Moore Capito. Senator, thanks for the time. Uh, what happened in your point of view? Well, the president ended the talks today with me on a very cordial call. I am extremely disappointed because we offered the president basically what he asked us to do the first time we met with him, which was a trillion dollars over eight years, including baseline spending, and that it wouldn't include a tax increase. And uh, he, those were our, that was our red line, not his. And the last offer that I got from the president had four tax increases in it, and it also uh, was much closer uh, in. in in numbers than what the what the White House is putting out right now. So I'm disappointed with that, but uh, I just feel like we've missed a real opportunity here for at least 20 Republicans to join with the other Democrats to pass a, the most robust infrastructure package that we could have. Uh, and I'm still very dedicated to it, and we'll be working through my committees uh, to see that we at least get the legislation to back this up. Let me drill down into the weeds sure. here a little bit. You just mentioned the $1 trillion over eight years. The White House is claiming that Biden, uh, President Biden never agreed to that. The president said that to us himself he did. Uh, very clearly, yes, in the first meeting. He said one trillion over eight years and you can include baseline spending. Now, it was walked back by his staff shortly, uh, several days later, yes, that is true. But we were writing to what the president said he would negotiate to. And that's where I think we had a mis a miscommunications there, uh, or at least we didn't, uh, we understood what the president was saying uh, in that initial meeting. And from me, there on, we kept, getting, is, we kept is, getting further apart. Is there, did you see a disconnect between what the president wanted to do and what his staff wanted him to do? Well, I, I wouldn't say I didn't have a disconnect with what the president wanted to do. He wants a robust po package, and that's what we gave him. Uh, he did mention those specifics that I mentioned before. There was subsequent conversations with the staff where it was made clear this has to be all new spending, and, uh, and, and that was a, a great departure from where we had been with the president himself. Let me uh, play a soundbite from Jen Psaki today as she's okay. describing this kind of these talks uh, crumbling. The sausage making is messy. It takes time. There are ups and downs in the roller coaster. We're right in the middle of the sausage making right now. The fact is this train is moving on several tracks. The president wouldn't be spending his time uh, engaging in hours of discussions with Republicans if he didn't think something could come from it. Senator, did you feel undermined at all by this second track with Senator Cassidy and Senator Sinema that now the White House is kind of hanging its hat on? Well, I think obviously the news of that came out 10 days ago when I was in the midst of negotiating with the president on behalf of Republicans and a robust uh, bipartisan uh, agreement that we were hoping to get to. Um, you know, if there's something else out there that looks better, sometimes that's a distraction. And uh, that's disappointing to me in some sense, yes. Do you believe that uh, Democrats are committed to Republicans signing on to this, or do you think that there's going to be, in the end, an effort to go down the reconciliation road with your colleague from West Virginia, Joe Manchin, per perhaps agreeing to that? You know, I think that the uh, reconciliation, which will be massive tax hikes on middle Americans, on farmers, on small businesses, is where they're going to go. And uh, and they're going to include human infrastructure, uh, massive uh, electric vehicle vouchers, other uh, extraneous, what I think, to a physical core infrastructure bill will be. I expect that's the direction that they will go in July. But, uh, I, I, you know, I'm sure that they're going to be working forward with the group. Well, let me ask you bluntly. Do you think Republicans, you all, misplayed your hand here? Oh, no. No. I think we we, we came forward with very honest and clear pay-fors where we wouldn't have to raise taxes, where we know that what the American people believe is physical infrastructure or roads and bridges, uh, broadband, ports, airports, rail, transit, all of the core areas. The president still has schools and VA and housing and other things that universally is not thought of, very important issues, but are not thought of as core physical infrastructure. So, uh, you know, we were still not definitionally in the right place. Did we over, did we play our hand poorly? No, I think we were in it to win it for the American people. I told the president numerous times, this can be a major victory for both of us. Um, hopefully we'll have a major victory down the road. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like you're more on the, the line that maybe Democrats are eventually going to stick together. Well, they have so far, and I don't know, have any indications that that won't be the case. And working on those pay-fors, is there any light there with the White House as far as negotiating those specifically? 
There certainly wasn't in my last conversation with the president in the Oval Office. He brought forward stepped up basis uh, for uh, small businesses, you know, at death, so that uh, small businesses and farmers and, and individuals be very harmed. He also brought up uh, a uh, fossil fuel incentives, getting rid of that. I mean, you can imagine being from West Virginia, I was a bit dumbfounded. He talked about international taxes and corporate taxes, and those were those are the places, and you know, he, he threw out a number of 700 billion for uh, a tax gap. Well, I don't know that, number one, does that exist? And what does that encompass if you're going around collecting taxes in that amount? The regime that he laid out is very onerous in terms of trying to get to those numbers. We did have some, he offered COVID funds from the previous COVID packages, which was the first time he'd mentioned those. So that's a welcome part of the negotiations, I think, that can be uh, used in further negotiations. Last thing quickly, Senator, I know you've been engaged in these infrastructure talks, but have you seen the, the vice president's trip uh, down to Guatemala and, and Mexico and this soundbite that got a lot of attention of uh, her talking about not going to the southern border? I just want to get your reaction if you had seen that. You know, the one thing that struck me is in her, her response when she says, well, she hadn't been to Europe yet, and she hasn't been to the southern border. You know, we're talking about our own country here, our own southern border, uh, which is a tremendous security. I, I'm the um, appropriator, or I, I'm the uh, ranking member on appropriations for Homeland Security, uh, where we see 170,000 people. And they're not just coming from the Northern Triangle countries. They're coming from uh, Venezuela and, and Brazil and other parts of South America, Cuba. And, and, and so, you know, we've got a much bigger problem here than what the administration will admit to. Senator Shelley Moore Capito from West Virginia, we appreciate your time. Thanks, Brett.